Hi, welcome back to another episode of Coldstream Rod Shop. I'm Derek Fraser. In this week's video, we're going to keep on working on the original uh, 32 Ford Roadster, which we've nicknamed the International Roadster. Uh, last week, I worked on the cowl and I got one inner door panel all fixed up and the door skin off. This week, we're going to carry on doing the other side. So uh, the driver's side here, it's not in as bad a shape on the inside as what the passenger was, passenger side was. It does have a couple gashes here. They're going to have to fit. And if I rub my hands all over it, I'm going to find the, uh, the, the little dents and nicks and everything else I'm going to have to knock out. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did with that one. I'll take this door skin off. We're basically planning to use the top half of the door uh, odor skin and then replace it with one of the door skins we have there when we put it back together again. So follow along, we're uh, on to the driver's door. As you can see for the time lapse, I now have the door skin off and the top of the door skin. I'm going to hang on to the lower part of the door skin there. I mean, it's pretty decent metal, but it is just nicked and dented and stretched beyond all of my capabilities of flattening. I'm sure there's somebody in the world that could flatten that and, and shrink every single little dent into it. But given the fact that, you know, we've got door skins over there. Uh, it's going to save us a lot of time just trying not to fix that. Um, we also want to keep as much original metal as possible, but there's limits, of course. Um, what you saw there was a lot of struggling on my part to try and get these uh, spot welds that are tucked up underneath the edge here. So it kind of came apart the same way as the other one did. Basically, try to drill them out the best you can and then just use the chisel to 
to break the spot welds where it attaches to the top of the door. So those, I'll flatten those out, I'll fill them. And uh, same thing, this lip here, the lip is actually in pretty good shape. I'm going to flatten that out and grind it off. Along the edges of the door top, um, there is some damage, so I'll have to repair that as well. But overall, the, uh, the top of the door is actually still in pretty good shape. It retains the original snap holes and stuff, which the owner wants to, to do. Then on the inner door, uh, not as much damage to this one as the other one. You know, quite a few dents, like some high spots here. Of course, there's got to have a bullet hole, just like the other one did. And then there's one tear over here. Going to flatten that out and weld it up, kind of like what I did on the other door skin, uh, inner door skin. Um, take the rest of the... Uh, door skin off the other side of here and then basically get these pieces ready uh, to sandblast so i'll sandblast both inner doors both tops of the inner doors then i will attach the low you know the the door skins to the door tops and we'll uh, put a coat of probably epoxy primer on the inside of the doors and the inside of the door skins before we put them together so all along, we, we fixed the, uh, the second door on the original Roadster here. There is the driver's door all patched up. I've put it back on the, uh, the car. I've got the bolts in place right now, basically just double checking that anything that I did while I was straightening it, I didn't change its fit. <clears throat> the passenger car, uh, passenger side one I put on as well. The, uh, it, it actually fits really well. It uh, swings in and I still have a really good gap along the bottom and the hinges don't bind up or anything like that. One of the things that I was asked to do was that when the cowl attaches to the cowl sides, originally there is a rivet right here. So I wasn't able to duplicate a rivet per se and weld it from behind. Uh, but what I was able to do is I drilled it out and then I basically very carefully welded the two pieces together from behind. And then I just built up a little bit of a round weld on the top of here to simulate what a rivet would look like. So right now what's going on, they're just waiting to for a break in the weather. And I'll take these uh, two inner door skins off. Um, plus over there on top of the table, we've got the tops of the outer door skins. I'm going to sandblast those, like I said, and then uh, get some epoxy primer on them. Well, unfortunately, it is a normal spring day in Nova Scotia. Kind of wet, I don't know, 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. A um, few degrees above Celsius day rainy and whatnot so i cannot take the inner door skins out and sandblast them and move along with the international roadster um, on the other hand over on the 40 plymouth we are still waiting for the transmission case to come back from cleaning we've got all of our parts to put the transmission together so decided to work on our 32 roadster so this episode is normally well, is going to be about the International Roadster, but um, we're going to work a little bit on uh, the Camera Ladies Roadster. One of the things that I picked up for an extremely good price was a Speedway brake kit um, and master cylinder. Now, the thing is that with that kit, it was designed to mount through these holes up against the frame wall. Um, I didn't want to put it there. I don't want to put it there. Um, one of the reasons is, is that the brake pedal will be too far over on this side. I want my brake pedal on the right hand side of the steering column. Um, and I want my master cylinder more inboard or more inboard over here. So essentially what I did, I cut up the brackets. I made some pieces here and kind of more or less duplicated what I already had over on the 32 uh, pickup and my 29 Model A because it's basically the same chassis. So right now I've got it modified, uh, get a little echo there from the door skin, um, but I'm ready to weld this into the frame here. I'm going to weld it at this point and I'm more than likely going to put a gusset here or somewhere to reinforce it. And essentially there's like a bolt that goes through here. There'll be a clevis down there and then 
This forward style master cylinder came with it. I am more than likely going to replace it with a Corvette style one. Um, the reason being is that you can have the ports on this side and it's easier to plumb the, the brake lines because the Ford one only has it on this side. So I've got a friend, I know he's going to use that, so it's not going to go to, uh, to waste or whatever. So just going to get the welder over here and weld that in place and start working on a gusset. And then hopefully we will have uh, the brake pedal in place on the camera lady's roadster. Yesterday was a clips day as it was in most parts of Eastern Canada. Um, and it was a nice day outside. So I finally got around to sandblasting the inner door skins. Everything's all blasted off. Um, I basically do a light blast and I go over it with a wire wheel. So um, both of the door skins are there. I also sandblasted the top of the door pieces that I'm trying to, going to try and uh, recover. And as well, we've got the, um, the dash all sandblasted on both sides. So over here right now, what I'm going to, or I'm in the middle of the process of doing, is that I've removed the top half of the uh, reproduction door skin. And I just basically prepped up the top half of the original door um, that I'm going to weld on here. So uh, going to try and get that one done and then I'll move to the other door skin. One complication with the other door skin is that these little slots here are not cut out and there's a little reveal as you see along here. Now some of the reproduction bodies don't have this but on the original Fords they did have this little detail here. That's gonna... <laughs> I got to figure out how to do that over here on this second door skin because um, it's not there. So follow along and see how we solve that problem. So there's door skin number one, which is the driver's side, uh, the easier of the two to do. Um, I've got the top section all welded on and hammered out. Um, I'll flip it over here so you can see the other side. Kind of just dress the weld off a little bit on the inside so um, what i'm going to do is once i get an epoxy primer onto it i will put a little bit of seam sealer along that edge there just to make sure that nothing bleeds through and then i'll like well actually i'll clean up the inside of the door skin too before i put the epoxy primer on it so that's the first one um, now I guess it'll be on to figuring out how to make this little um, detail over here on this door skin that doesn't have it. Well, I'm on to making the little detail around the, uh, the hinge, as you can see on this other skin. As I just mentioned, there's, there's no hole cut um, and there's nothing punched. So... You can't really bead roll this. It's kind of formed with a die of some sort. And on my own Roadster, I've got them. I've seen them on other Roadsters, like I said previously, where the door skins, they don't have it. It's an optional thing. But what we want to do is actually put this Roadster skin on, or door skin on like an original one. So I've been playing over here on the bench. What I decided to do, um, is I took a piece of quarter inch steel and I took my mini grinder with this little wheel and I made the measurements and I ground out basically a groove in a piece of quarter inch plate and then kind of welded the corners up and then went over it with the die grinder here to dress it up a little bit. Um, there's my first attempt there because uh, I didn't clean the corners up but there's actually the second attempt. So what I was doing, I just took the piece of uh, sheet metal and then I would clamp it here and there and then I just took um, This is a pry bar. Um, I just sacrificed this pry bar and kind of ground a round edge onto it and then just basically beat around the corner until I Got this indentation here on this side and uh, which would replicate What I'm looking for here on the doors so that is a really close proximity or um, of what I want. It's the same, same width and everything. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I am going to take the plunge, take this door skin, flip it upside down over here on this and actually try and pound out that reveal and then cut it out in this door skin. So 
follow along, see how we go. As you can see from the time lapse there, I did the um, lower reveal. Um, I've got that all beaded in here. So we're ready to cut that piece out for the clearance on the hinge. Oh, there you go, in the center. And then I did the top. Now in order to do the top, I actually had to trim off my die. I had to cut a piece off of the side here so that when I flip this upside down like that on the table, I would come up against the uh, the body line there. So got both of them done now. A um, little bit of uh, stress kind of trying to figure out how to make this, but it's um, you just have to think about it, I guess. And anyways, we have both of the both of the reveals in for the hinges. Just got to cut those out, and then what I'll do next is going to cut the top of this section off because this is a second. Um, I'll change my zoom here. This particular door skin is a second. And it is a second for several reasons. One of which is I've got to weld this on so I'll have something to beat over. And then the actual top of the door isn't finished. So in this case, um, this door skin really is only good up to the, the belt line. So we're going to take the original top off of the passenger side we're going to weld it on to the uh, uh, to this door skin after I make this repair and then we'll have two door skins ready to go on the inner doors so here's the passenger door skin now I've got the top welded on um, really want to do some TIG welding but my skills aren't quite there yet so we just did the MIG weld um, took my time. I'm still going to grind that and dolly it. Um, they say MIG welds can't or aren't easy to dolly and there's some truth in that but you still can dolly them. Um, I don't have any distortion here. I took my time. Probably took about an hour or so or more um, to get that welded on. I left it overnight and then came back and did the finish pass on it kind of thing. I also have the uh, the hinge holes cut uh, you can see the detail around the reveal there for where the hinges go through and then over on this side I had to weld up the edge of this door skin because it was torn I think I showed that previously if I flip the door skin over you can see that I've got plenty of penetration um, on my weld there across the top and you can see where the original piece is welded on. So I'm going to clean that all up, get the rust off the outside and then hopefully my PPS cups from my spray gun will get here today and I can put a coat of epoxy primer on the inside of the two door skins and the inside of the inner door skins. So there's the top of the door all dressed up and uh, dollied. There's there's really no distortion into it that I can really feel. Um, nothing, I guess, if there is something that 16th or 32nd of body filler or even high build primer won't um, fill up. There were a couple of little dings and dents in the top of the door um, here that I, I hammered out in the same situation. You can only get up so far underneath. Um, I've got all of that out that I can get out. And then I finished, uh, just basically buffed the outside of the door skin to get all the surface rust off. And for a sanity check, I mean, I used my profile gauge here. Um, I put it on the door beforehand and uh, basically we've, we're keeping the same profile. It's not moved or distorted, so I should, I should really expect no issues putting this on the inner door skin. So right now I'm basically waiting for my PPS cups to come in for my uh, spray gun and we've got some epoxy primer in the car. Um, 
and then we will set up the booth over there. We'll move everything out of the way and we'll set the inside booth up, uh, my homemade booth, and we'll get some epoxy primer on the inside of these doors. Well, it's been a while since I set up the impromptu spray booth, but uh, kind of had to do it here. We've got the plastic draped down. I've got the back window opened up and then the 40 Plymouth chassis is moved over here aside. And then I've got the two roadsters jammed over here to one side. And then over here in the booth, uh, hopefully we can do this quite steadily. Um, we'll walk in here and as you can see there, We've got the outer door skins. Um, we've got two coats of epoxy primer on the inside of the outer door skins. And then I've got two coats of epoxy primer on the inside of the inner door skins. So it'll take a little while for these to set up. Most likely I'll let them sit overnight and then tomorrow I will start putting together. I will uh, skin the doors, so to speak. Um, but for now, that's it. We've got them, uh, we've got them coated. As you just saw from the time lapse there, I put the door skin on the inner door. And what I didn't show you is I put it over on the car. I bolted it in place with the, the hinges. But what I found was that the corner here um, was too long um, versus this corner here. So basically there was interference here where it wouldn't close um sorry right along here so i'd like to was too much material now at first i thought maybe i didn't quite do something right but then i remembered that um this was the worst of the second doors so it's more than possible that it actually slipped in the die uh, given the fact that the top of it wasn't formed properly and some of the edges were short um, leads me to think that maybe it was actually um, not the right shape. So we've got the sides good. Everything is square that way. And what I've had to do is basically um, mini grind off some of the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with a welder. And much the same as when you're adjusting door gaps, um, sometimes what you have to do is basically either weld build up along this edge and grind it off or grind this edge off and then weld it short um, whatever you got to do to kind of make the door fit the door opening so um, right now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to weld this up and then i'll grind it flush and i'll mount it back on the cowl and see how that looks now there's some dents on the cowl I wasn't able to pound out from behind simply because there's an inner structure underneath that doesn't allow me to get from behind. So there's actually a big support that goes up underneath the cowl section here. So there's there was a really big dent here and there's still a dent here. Now what I'm doing is I'm just drilling a 5 32nd hole and I'm using my, my slide hammer here. Um, essentially I'm going to screw that screw into that hole and then use a slide hammer to pull it out. 
Now, there's stud guns that you can get. I, I don't have one, so I kind of have to improvise here a little bit. So what I'm, all that's going to happen now is that I will, now that I get most of that dent out, I'm going to weld it up and then grind it smooth. Now, it won't be perfect, but like I said, we're, we're going for a good metal finish on this car. Um, one that, you know, there will be a little bit of body fill into it, but um, not going to get it really perfect. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, we got some wicked, this one, I'm really hoping I can get that one out. Some of the other small ones here, they might actually have to be, we might have to leave those and put body fill into them because the, barring having like a stud gun or something to pull them out with a slide hammer or or something like that um kind of limited as to what we can do here with them but i'm gonna work on these and we'll get them welded up and get that part of the cowl finished and there's the repairs now with the two dents along where the windshield frame uh, gasket sits uh, one right there and one right here um, basically leveled them up welded them welded them shut and then ground them smooth there was a little bit of stuff here i had to had a couple little pinholes i had to take care of and then over here along the dash area i was able to um, drill the holes but i had to once i drilled the holes i couldn't quite get in behind so i basically used a little awl to to pick in behind to pull the dents out all of, like all the way around um, then filled the holes up with weld and then ground them smooth so Got those all done, still a few more things to do. Next, I'm going to go over here and going to start repairing the dash. Um, the dash is it's actually in pretty good shape. Um, there's a couple holes here I have to, to fill along with this one. And then over here, there's two tiny holes. There's a, a little bit of a couple, a little bit of dent here around where the, the dash insert goes. That'll be easy to fix. The other thing is that across the top here, um, there's screws that hold it into the dash and they're 1224s. Somewhere along the line, somebody removed the little square 1224 nuts. So I ordered some of those. They should be in later this week. So once I repair the dash here, I should actually be able to put it in place into the cowl. So we'll show you that in a few minutes once I get this all fixed up. So there's the holes all filled up on the dash. Um, you can notice here that this is from a right-hand drive car, as I've mentioned in the previous episodes, because it's got the holes here for the uh, steering column on the right-hand side. I'm not sure yet. I have to check with the uh, uh, my friend that I'm doing this for to see if he wants me to fill these holes up. Obviously, we're going to be going with a right-hand drive 32 for. 32 Ford Roadster, so um, there will eventually be holes drilled on this side for the steering column. I just don't know, just for, he may want to leave these holes here. Anyways, I'm, I'll check with him. If we have to fill them up, we will. Uh, I've got the uh, the dents filled in and the, um, the gauge hole, and um, pretty much ready to either epoxy prime it or just stick it in the car. I'm not sure if we're going to epoxy prime this right away, or if we're going to epoxy prime it when we do the rest of the car. But the dash is pretty much ready to go. Just going to wait on those 1224 square nuts to come in. And then I'll be able to put it in the car. Here we are. I did as many of these little dents as I could. Basically pulled them out the way I showed you. And then welded them up. There's still a little bit here that it's just going to have to... We're going to have to do it with body fill because there's really no way to take it all apart and fix the sheet metal um, so it's it's a far cry from what it was before um, i'm happy with it um, the amount of body fill it would take to smooth it out is, is minimal um, so that's the cow uh, this episode we kind of finished the doors off i have the doors in they're all fitting and aligned to the point where i'm going to get ready to work on the back half of uh, the 32 roadster I also took the original door hinges or the door mechanisms out of the original doors. So I've got two original 32 Roadster door mechanisms. This stuff here is reproduction, but that's okay. 
Um, they do need to be tweaked and bent because they they are bent and stuff. Um, I typically don't put those in until I've got the quarters on and I've got the the striker plates in place. So that will come later. Um, so that's it for this video. I know it was part two of the doors, but there was quite a lot to do to get them sorted out. Um, please like, share, tag, and subscribe. Uh, send me your comments and actually don't forget to get out in your own garage and work on your own projects. Anyways, we'll see you next week. Everybody take care and have a good one.